friends, welcome to a new episode of Merging Minds powered by BeautiWorks, the AI-powered TMS. Today, as always, I am excited to bring you another guest. To bring you today, the interviewer, my favorite interviewer in the industry, the interviewer number one who's been interviewed today, my friend Tucker Johnson. Hey, Tucker, what you do? how are you doing, brother? Hey, good to see you, Javi. It's good to be on your podcast. It's nice to be interviewed for a change. I would say. Yeah, you're always interviewing you. I, I follow your interviews all the time. Those LinkedIn lives you do, those super interesting conversations you bring, those innovative things. Those, 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 and I, you know what, what I love the most about? Your opinions and how you express them and how you don't give a shit about what people say. You always express yourself. And I love that. The clarity, wow. the purity of you, man. The joys of working for yourself. I don't have an HR department looking over me. I love it. I love it. I love it. I don't know if you guys haven't met Tucker before. Probably you did. If you haven't, let me read his bio because we are proud millennials. We're about the same age. Um, and uh, and uh, I was telling Tucker that I'm jealous of him being a founder because that's my final goal one day. I'll be a founder of something. I don't know where it is. But if you don't know Tucker, Tucker Johnson is the author of the General Theory of the Translation Company and co-founder of Nimzi Insights, uh, which are both um, joint, pro uh, joint projects with his partner, Renato Berinato, that father I never had. Right. <laughs> Papa Renato. Oh my God, man. But it's cool. Like, I love that guy because you can, I always call him and he always gives me good advice. So that's right. Oh, he, uh, he's always got advice. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, he does. He's got a big experience, right? So, to finish, one more quote. I mean, as a managing director of Nimzi and co founder, it's beautiful because Tucker is able to take Renato's crazy ideas and put them into action. That's lovely. That's complicated. This is an old bio that you grabbed because I haven't put a lot of ideas into action for a while. Anyway. A very good team that does the heavy lifting nowadays. But yeah, when we first started out, it was me and Renato. You know, we didn't hire our first employee. And that's the thing. You said you want to be a founder one day. You want to be an entrepreneur. And you start out and it, you, you better, better not be allergic to work because it's all you until you start getting those paychecks and you can start hiring people. Um, but yeah, it's been a journey. We started MZ Insights about seven or eight years ago, I want to say. And really, it was a response to what we perceived, um, I believe correctly, as just kind of a lack of information, lack of verified, trust, trusted information in the industry that was available. And started out as a market research firm, branched off into a lot of consulting, mergers and acquisitions. We acquired Multilingual Magazine and publishing new industry news and resources through there. So it's been a journey. But yeah, the, yeah. the best part about the job is that it frees me up to, like it's my job to talk to people in the industry and figure out what's going on. No, right? you're good at that. You're good at that. And I yeah. says, as I was, when I was introduced, I was saying that you'd never sell yourself. And I love that and I appreciate that because, you know, purity and, 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 and being oneself, it's something that I really value and I really adore. So, why, why would I sell myself if I can just, just buy you a drink and you sell me for me? <laughs> That's also true. You have a bigger audience than I do. <laughs> what do you think? So? Well, I, like you, I'm one of your followers. Like I always follow you, man. Like I always see all your posts. I read your posts. I follow your, your live shows. And I always try to give you the hearts and to compliment you guys because I really appreciate what you're doing, man. Like really. Thanks for doing oh. that. And like, like, since we're talking about this and, and, interpre and entrepreneurship, like, let me ask you, because I remember, and let's go back to that day. I think it was when you guys founded this around 2017, 18, right? Around about. I was, yeah, I remember I was there on that conference, sector conference, Log World in Seattle. And I remember that was about yeah. the time that Renato had uh, uh, announced that he was leaving his former job and he was going to build a company. And then he introduced me to you. We were at our common friend's office, Solomon's house. And they was, oh, this is Tucker. This is going to be my partner. Do you remember those that day? I do. <laughs> I do. Yeah, because back in the day, I didn't know anybody. So, and I was perfectly happy not knowing anybody, just doing my thing. And hang out with Renato long enough, you'll know everybody eventually. Yeah. Do you think that the world has changed a lot in the last eight years since you did that? Like, like the ways we've done? Oh, God, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the world's always changing, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, things are changing. I mean, it just, I mean, I hate to keep talking about this, but the, I think the pandemic is just one thing that really fundamentally changed the way that everybody does work and um it, it certainly had its effect on our industry as well you know, push push more towards remote work our our industry has always been 
pretty remote just by the nature of who who we are and what we do and stuff like that but it's really just changed the mindset of the way that we do things and in recent years you know advancements in technology and all of that stuff have really really made people reconsider what is their technology strategy we work with a lot of people here at Dimsey just trying to figure out all right what's the best technology to use because there's so many options out yeah, there yeah, and yeah, yeah. the thing about technology is and what you mentioned you mentioned um, our book, The General Theory of the Translation Company. And I remember when we wrote that, we very purposefully did not talk about technology in the book. Why? Because we're lazy. We didn't want to come out with the second edition, third edition, fourth edition, because within a year, it would have been obsolete. I know people that teach at universities, so localization programs, and they teach technology at the universities. Yeah. And those poor sons of, I'm sorry, those poor guys and gals, they, um, they have to update their curriculum every year and it's already out of date and by the time the semester's over right i teach at universities and i teach account management and i haven't updated my slides for five years but you but the good things that you you're i mean i think that you don't have to because you're always at the forefront talking to the clients and to looking to the to the vendors and you know what's cooking right yep yep and that's the cool part about my job like i remember i used i worked a long time at LSPs and loved it. I love, love working for LSPs, love project management, program management, all of that stuff. But nowadays, you know, and I talk to my clients, don't get me wrong, I have my clients, but nowadays I get to talk to everybody. I talk to LSPs, I talk to um, buyers, I talk to technology companies, and just in the course of my business, just, you know, taking industry briefings so that we can report on what they're doing, um, whether it's you know doing research for the NMC 100 that we just published, which is just, you know, the ranking of top companies and kind of our our general market evaluation that we put yeah. out every year for multilingual, you know, lots of connections there through multilingual. So it's it's a cool job. I like it. Yeah. So so let's think about some challenges that you had when you decided to start this journey of entrepreneurship some years ago, and let's think of hey. If I would have started this journey today, would the challenges be the same? Would they be different? Oh my God, would I be talking about hope, a completely different thing? You know, if we were to start NIMSI today, it would be, it would of course be different. I don't think it would be impossible. Well, the landscape has changed a lot in the last um, five years for, yes. I mean, my landscape, which is market research, consulting, new industry news, stuff like that. Um, back when we started NIMSI Insights, like I said, we wouldn't, you don't just found a company because you want to found a company. You found a company because you think that there's a demand in the market. There's a need. And nowadays there's so many more companies out there offering insights and news. And it's just amazing where we got Slater, you've got Nimsy, you've got Multilingual, you've got Common Sense Advisory still. Um, you got blogs popping up. You got more podcasts like when we started mz insights there was like one podcast it was renato's podcast we're not on michael stevens now yeah i remember that one i was following that one big time as well yeah yeah, yeah. Was like and nowadays every every junior marketing manager has a podcast because it's so easy it's so easy to start a podcast and I, I don't say that disparagingly good for them like start if, if you're listening to this you've always wanted to start a podcast yeah what, what have you got to lose do it no. Yeah, it's persistency. It's that's, that's that's everything. It's continuing to be out there. It's continuing to bring in good topics, good guests, interesting. That's it. Just, it's it's as easy as that. Anyone can do it. Right? Well, the great thing about a podcast is I don't have to know anything. I just bring on people that are really smart yes. and talk to them, and then people think that I know what I'm talking about. I don't. Welcome to my life, brother. Exactly. It's good. <laughs> it's good work if you can get it. Hey, and for those who listen to to or, and follow us, because we have people that are starting to to know and to really get familiar with the localization industry or that just heard about this or that just say like, hey, I want to start in this industry. I want to start by founding a company. So if you're going to start founding a company or, or, the, or the most, let's say the most natural transition, which be, which would be your translator and you said, hey, I want to build my own language service provider. Can you think of that? Can you imagine you were to found a localization company today? Which what what, what specific services or, or or technologies would you focus on and why? Yeah, I mean, well, you could. It, it's harder, and I talk about this in the book too. That historically, there's always been a very low barrier to entry to starting a translation company. 
right? You don't need a ton of upfront investment to do to do it. You need a website, some business cards, and your first client, and bam, you have a company. It's not a multi-million dollar company yet, but you have a company. And it's a little bit more challenging these days just because of the proliferation of technology and the expectations that you have so, you have a minimum of technological literacy to start a company. But that's all something just to get into it um, and start a fledgling company, you certainly can. You don't need to go out and get a ton of investments. You don't need to be we localize on day one, right? And I think some people s stop themselves from going into the entrepreneurship route or starting a company because they think, well, I'll never be as big as TransPerfect. I'll never be as big as We Localize or RWS or as you know the big ones out there. And it's like, well, not not with that attitude. You won't stop stop trying to be We Localize and be um, be yourself, and then grow the company from there. And like I said, it starts with one client, and that's my story here at Nimsy as well. Like we worked our tails off for the first couple of years. And when we really took off, it was with one client. We got, we got a large contract, um, made some good money and invested that money back into the company. Yeah. And I, I really like about you guys and about us that we don't have any VC. We don't have any investors. We don't have any, you don't know what the future of the company is going to be never. Right. But we don't have, and this allows for creativity. This allows for being yourself. This allows for other type of internal relationships, other type of internal kind of work. And, and as I said, for to me, the most important is when you feel the culture of the company that you know that you are in a good spot, right? Yeah. And, and when it's your company, you can define what that culture is going to be. Oh, yes, indeed. Right? Yes, yes. And, indeed. you know, we, we've, that's my experience too, is we've avoided taking outside investments. And so we truly are our own bosses. And that's, and that's very deliberate. Like we could grow a lot quicker with outside investments, but then we would have bosses essentially. And I didn't start the company to have a boss. I, I, I think. Uh, nothing against bosses, you know, some days I'd love to have a boss that just tells me what to do and I do it and I get my paycheck at the end of the day. But that's not what, why you start a company out there. So, you know, if people are out there, they're listening and you want to go that entrepreneurship route, it can be very rewarding, right? Set your own schedule, be your own boss, work with the clients you want to work with, meaning you can say no, right? That was one thing. <laughs> You know, if you work for somebody else and you're an account manager and you have the client from hell, well, guess what? They're still your client. <laughs> yes. Right? If I have go a client from hell, man. I can go them yeah. which way the which way the wind flies. Yeah. You you mentioned this right now, and I think it's it's uh, it's it's the, it's the it's the first fear and barrier that one would put on himself. Like you start a company and you start saying, "Holy shit! Whatever I do, am I going to be the next?" big stuff and i know there's people that think this way and probably i don't know if most of the entrepreneurs but it's a big importance of the mindset right i mean how important that is no and i was thinking like um once you've gone past that step right once you've gone and you say like hey i'm doing it let's freaking do this right i could i could i could think that other challenges would come like you for example starting thinking okay i did this i have a company that is up and running now, how can I how can I start differentiating myself in an industry where large and established players are dominant, right? Yeah, and well, just by the fact that the other the large established players are large and established, you're already differentiated. Right? There's a good niche for companies out there that aren't large because if if I'm a buyer and I've got a million, not even a million. I've got a budget of two hundred thousand dollars, which it's, it's decent money. Two hundred thousand dollars a year to spend with a localization company. If I go to We Localize, if I go to TransPerfect, if I go to RWS, um, and I'm you know I'm not trying to disparage; those are perfectly fine, competent companies. But just logically thinking about it, am I going to get assigned their best PM? Probably not. Their best project manager is probably working on an account worth $20 million, 
right? So a lot there's a big appetite out there for companies with 200,000, half a million dollar budgets that don't want to work with the big guys. They want to work with someone small. Our industry is absolutely, totally fragmented. We, we say it's not fragmented, it's pulverized, right? Other industries, you look at it and you know look at the total market size of the industry. And then you look at the top player, top five players, top 10 players, and the top 10 players are 80, 90% of the total market, right? Not so in our industry. I don't have the figures up in front of me. It's in the NIMSI 100 report. If people want to look it up, but not so for our industry. It's, um, there is a lot of room for smaller companies. And every time, every time one of those big companies gets bigger, let's say, you know, someone buys another company, let's say we local likes goes out and purchases another company, which they do, you know, a lot of their growth is through acquisition, they have a yes. very strong acquisition strategy. Um, Every time that happens, people are going to get laid off. It's just a natural part of the M and A process, right? What are those people going to do? Well, half of them are going to go out and get other jobs, and then some of them are going to go into business for themselves. We don't have unemployed people in the localization industry. We have independent co contractors, right? We have consultants. You go to people's LinkedIn, and you know people don't announce, "I got laid off from this company. I'm looking for a job." They announce, "Hey, I started an LLC." You know, Tucker Johnson Consulting, LLC, right? Yes. So you're never unemployed. That's not to say that you're always making money, but you're never unemployed. You're never unemployed. No, but but is that more on the client or is that more on the vendor side? Oh, I've, because seen both. I've seen it both. You, you think both so, both. right? Yeah. Because I don't, like, like a, a big part of what I try to do and what I do with a lot of love and a lot of like, hey, I put time in this like, connecting people and connecting friends who have gotten laid off. And and most of them, I don't know if it's because I have many more friends on the vendor side, on the buyer side than on the vendor side, I don't know. But to me, most of them are are people that were laid off from a client side, right? Yeah. Uh, um, you, you, you know, one thing that I, I don't think I've seen it, or I've seen it one time, I can think of Pascal. Like oh, she I got just laid saw off. her last week. Yeah. yeah, she got, she was affected and then, she just came and she built her own company. Yeah, doing great. I just talked to her last yeah. week. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I interviewed her the other day. She was she was one of the guests in the podcast the other day, and I love that. Yeah. I love to see her. You, you. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Why don't people do that more? Like you think that I don't know, man. Well, I know. Hmm. Because there's a lot of risk involved with that. Yeah. Right. In the meantime, starting a business is. In those that that first year or three, don't expect to be making a lot of money, right? And in the meantime, you got kids, you got a mortgage to pay, you've got responsibilities. That you know, it it's hard, it's hard. So unless you have something like I was very fortunate when when we found it, I found a cheat code for it because I just received a you know stock buyout, severance, what whatever it was, right? But I had a little bit bit of money that I said, well, all right, worst case scenario, we don't make money. It's fine. Like, I'm going to be able to pay the mortgage, right? <laughs> Nowadays, I, I don't think I'd have the energy to start a company. It's too stressful. Oh, you would do it again. You would do it again. I have no doubt. I don't know. I've got three kids. I've got, well, that, that's enough. I've got three kids. I agree. <laughs> so, uh, but, yeah. Like, uh, but I, I have not, like, 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 uh, one 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 of the things that I try to also advocate for, whether it's here on LinkedIn or when I go and talk and everything is about our generation, millennials, who were the generation that we were promised everything. Like, go to university, you got an, an amazing job. Speak yeah. language, we hire you everywhere. I would sue my guidance counselor if I could remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, like it. Took a few years to get started. To get started, probably you ask a lot of the leaders. My some of my best friends, like some of the best friends that are being very successful now. Jose Palomares had to go through shit. Yeah. Martino Prada had to go through shit. Lots yeah. of those friends that are like, holy shit, I want to be like them. They like been through shit, man. And uh, 
Yeah, and we don't talk about that enough. I don't know if that's a generational thing that happens all the time, but I, at least that's that's what we that what I've been experiencing and living. And I guess you're the same, right? Well, you got to pay your dues, right? Yes, and, you know, yeah. you can say what you want about us millennials, but I think one thing is that we're a generation that's not entirely afraid of hard work. Oh fuck no, no. Right? I, I think you see that because that does exist um, nowadays. I see a certain sense of entitlement that not so much I, I think that's getting better i think that's getting reined in right but a lot of people want what they want they want it now and you know i'm here to tell you you can have it like good go for it follow your dreams but be realistic about it right first you know it's going to be a struggle you yeah. might have to have roommates for a few years <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah well yeah yeah i was 31 uh, eh? too. so yeah 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 yeah. hey man how like to me you are one of the most extrovert yeah. people i met here but to you i know that you're an introvert yes how do you define yourself in this regard and then people i always you. want to talk about me being an introvert because they don't believe me because they think oh you have a podcast you. and no. you can carry on a conversation so you must be an extrovert. Well, you know, I, I look at it as, and you're the ac absolute opposite. You're a, you're an extrovert, which is why we get along. Because I speak in in bed in dreams, mate. Yeah, exactly. You could talk to a fire hydrant for two hours. <laughs> um, I go to the street and I sing on my own, and I'm with the music on the anyway. Just to talk a little bit. Better. Yeah, well, I mean, just the difference between introversion and extroversion, and not one's not inherently better than the other. I don't. No, not at all. Not at all. But it's where do you draw your energy from? I use that definition, right? So you go to a party with a hundred people, and everyone's having a great time, and after an hour, you have more energy. It amps you up. You get excited. You're like, where's the after party? Where are we going for drinks after this? I don't want to go home, right? And I'll go to the same party with 100 people, and I'll have a fine time. I'll talk to people. I'll, you know, it's not like I'm sitting in the corner hiding. Oh, I might do that a little bit. Um, but after an hour, I'm exhausted. I'm ready to go home. And go oh, to bed, yeah? Right, yeah. I get my energy from, from just kind of, you know, I like my spreadsheets. You know, I've said this before. You know, sometimes I, li I like spreadsheets better than people. And then, and, and then, then, then let me ask you because I was thinking of asking you, since you are, since you define yourself as an introvert, right? Although I don't think you are, and and, and, and you've worked, you've worked your way up in on the LSP side, from being a project manager to being program manager to leading teams to all that stuff. And that for an introvert, when you have to be facing clients, it can be challenging, right? Uh, uh, how did you do it? Did you how, how, tell me? Tell me. So if not, if you don't have an answer for this question, you're an extrovert, brother. Well, Harvey, really? have you ever had to fill out a spreadsheet? Oh God, no. Only with Joseph years ago, and I hated him for that. You hated him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to Joseph about that. How dare he make you fill out spreadsheets? <laughs> but my point is, is like you can, right? Just because you hate yeah. it doesn't mean you can't fill out a spreadsheet. Doesn't mean I can't go talk to clients. Fine. Yeah, but but then but then hear me out, because when when once you we are developing ourselves in a way. The other day I was having a podcast, I was having an interview, and I was talking to the to the to the to the leader that I interviewed, and she was a person who who just finished her career in the industry, right? And she was telling me that hey, you're in, you just finished the first third of of your life of your work life. You're starting your your second third, right? And yeah. you have another two thirds to finish your career right and um and you evolve you evolve you definitely evolve you're not the same person then and you're going to be now and you're going to be in five years sure, right sure. and that 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 is key to to to, to growth to development right and uh and uh i don't know what, what, what do you think like well, you gotta like, you gotta remind yourself of that too is yeah. that hey because every once in a while the temptation comes along to think that well i know everything and my opinions are all correct and just and you got to remember, yeah, I thought that five years ago too. And five years ago, I had some pretty stupid opinions, right? So it kind of keeps you humble, you know. Every, every time I start to think I know something, it's like, yeah, well, maybe. But yeah. let's let's see how that turns out five years from now. But yeah, you gotta you, you gotta remain teachable. Yeah, I know, okay. and that's you know, I work with Renato, and Renato's Renato's the guy. Renato's the guy. People call when they need a keynote of someone that just knows everything about the industry. 
right? I told him I brought him from Seattle last February to California to be a keynote. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you to you and all the other oh, out yeah. there that keep inviting Renato because I never see him. I live in the same town as him, but I never see him because he's always on a plane going to speak somewhere. <laughs> but well, my point is, even Renato, he stays teachable. Right? Yes. He yes, goes indeed. to the conferences and he sits there and he shuts up and he listens and he learns from people. And, you know, people don't realize that about Renato. They think just because he has a microphone in front of his face 90% of the time that he's just some know it all that, you know, likes to hear his own voice. Now, he does like to hear his own voice, but he's also, he's not a know it all. Like, he's always learning. He's always, and I, I envy him. I, I, I look up to the, him. Because after so many years in the industry, he's still very passionate about it. He's still very passionate about learning new things. And yes, it's hard to keep that fire alive. And, uh, and uh, but let me go back to that, that chat that I had a few days ago with this guest that I had. And then, you know what came up as well as a, as a part of the conversation? Uh, mentoring. And not only mentoring, what we define as reverse mentoring, which okay. is what, what we people that are in the stage of development of our lives and our career can help with as well, which is like somebody that is in a more advanced stage. Hey, you don't want to be disconnected from what's going on, right? Like you don't want to be called calling now, for example. You don't want to pick up the phone and call, call somebody. Now. You have to be aware of what's going on. There's people that still do that. Not so long ago, I was working with people that were doing that as well. So reverse mentoring. Like, well, like mentoring, mentoring and coaching is, I guess this is still in, in style, but especially like a while back, some years ago, there was, it's like everyone was talking about coaching and mentoring, right? And it still exists to this day. And hey, what, what's about to come out of my mouth is just my opinion. Um, like you said, I have lots of opinions um, because a lot of people swear by it. They love the fact that they got a mentor, they got a coach and all of that stuff. Um, but I'm always, I'm very skeptical of mentoring and coaching, at least in an official capacity, right? Why? I, I, Tell us why. Um, because I've, I've talked to enough people that call themselves coaches that, frankly, um, don't know what they're talking about. Right. Um, just because you call yourself a coach, just because you make Instagram reels or have a podcast. I, I, I'm not talking about you, heavy. So don't no, take I'm not. I, I'm just, trying, I, this, just, I don't know, but, 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 but I can think of a couple. Too, this so. is not a passive aggressive jab. Um, I know, <laughs> but just because you call yourself a coach doesn't mean you have some. Just because yes. you charge for your time doesn't mean you have something to offer. And what I tell people is, yeah, you do need a mentor. Um, but. You know, don't go out and get a coach. Make a friend. Big time, big time, big time. Like, like, to surround yourself with people that know more than you that you can look up to. Um, find people. And sorry, I've got birds here. I and know. No it's worries. my podcast. I don't care, but I. It's rude of me to not put them away. No I, I didn't realize it. She just laid an egg, and she's very proud of it. Um, <laughs> but um, surround yourself with people that are smarter than you more experienced than you right surround yourself with people that you can learn from um treat them with respect right uh, give them the respect that their experience um affords them but you, do you need a coach do you need to you know it's like eh. like like, like do, you, do you know what you need do you know what you need you need both good and bad bosses that's yes, I've, like, learned I've learned a lot from good bosses, and I've learned a lot from bad bosses. That's true. Yes, indeed. That's indeed. Yes, and that's indeed. when I tell people that are going through a period, they're like, my boss, blah, 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 blah. Um, and it's like, all right, well, what, what can you learn from this situation? Right? Well, I can't learn. I'm not learning anything because my boss is an idiot, and they're not teaching me anything, and blah, 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 blah. Okay, then what you can learn from this situation is how to survive and thrive with a bad boss. Because guess what? what? Not, There's lots of bad bosses gonna, out there. Yes, and what you are not going to be like. Exactly. Exactly. When you're right? a boss, right? Yeah, like when you're a boss, right? When you're a boss. And that's eventually probably going to happen. Yeah. So, so like, I've, like I could think of, of the, the, the worst boss that I had when I was an intern years ago. And, and they was like, Joseph. In we have... <laughs> ah, no. No, Joseph is a very dear f figure to yeah, me. Joseph's awesome. 
Joseph's awesome. Joseph is the reason why I'm here talking to you today. And I'm always thankful that you have to think of Joseph being the person that have my, my mother's, he's my emergency contact when I was living in the Czech Republic in Prague for nine years. That's how much I love Joseph, right? And it's, so joke aside, like, like I was, I was thinking of like, in Spain, we have an expression, it's like, I'm going to explain it to you. It's like, when you make a problem out of everything, we refer to it as you drown in a glass of water, right? Yeah. Does it yeah. make sense? Yeah. Like there's, there's a person that can drown in a glass of water, right? And I had a couple of, I, I worked with a couple of people that could drown in a glass of water. Everything was stressful. Everything was like, oh, a problem. Everything is whatever. And it comes down to attitude. And hey, hear me out. I'm just a 40 year old crazy kid that is trying to realize the dreams, but I've learned from that, from those people, right? And, uh, and you need them. You need them to see, to look backwards and say like, hey, I don't want to, like, I'm, I, I don't want to have people like this close to me. I want to be different. I want to make a difference, right? And Well, I, I firmly believe that you're an amalgamation of the five people that you spend the most time with, right? You think so? so tell me about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, if, if you spend, if the people that you hang out with the most are all neurotic and stressed out all of the time, guess what? You're going to start being neurotic and stressed out all of the time. Right. If the five people that you hang out with and talk to the most in the world are all pretty healthy individuals, good work life balance, hard workers, honest, you're going to be a pretty well balanced, hardworking, honest individual. Um, you know, you spend enough time in the barbershop, you're going to get a haircut. It's just how how it works. So surround yourself with good people. That makes a lot of sense. My friend. That makes a lot of sense. Hey, I, I just don't want to take more to much more time with you because I think this interview I'm enjoying it is like you I had some questions asked that I just didn't even look at because I knew that when when we talk all yeah, I don't know how much value I added in this conversation you today. do always because uh, no 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 the importance here is that the perspective like, first of all to me the most important thing is that the interviewer has been interviewed boom and now one day when I grow, grow old when I'm in my deathbed I'll be able to say like I was the person that interviewed Tucker oh lordy uh, well We've got to find an excuse. Have you ever been on my podcast? Uh, Early, you have. I don't think so. No. Really? All right. You got to find an excuse. All right. All right. I'll, I'll go and book you afterwards. Don't worry. Yeah, but exactly. I want to be there. I want to be there on, a, on one of the lives. And I know, I know a couple of things we can talk about. You know what, people? Uh, um, I, I always try to advocate for as well. It helps growth and it helps people uh, avoid tough situations when 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 you get laid off or when you don't have a job you know what i try to advocate a lot for for more networking for more telling stories about who you are in a proper way using social media we're gonna do you want to talk about that for example next time we i mean social media yeah, social media is a great tool um it, it's it's a tool but just like any tool it can be used for good or it can be used for evil right and i think there's a fine line between adding value and self-promotion and sometimes that line gets crossed because if i have a valuable message then i need to promote that message which yes, might yeah. be interpreted as self-promotion right but you know like what i say to people on on my podcast i i i don't i don't take it as seriously as i should right and there's two rules is number one, have fun. I want to make my guests feel comfortable so that they have a positive experience. Number two, add value to the audience. That's it, right? We're not, we're not here just to hear ourselves talk. We're here because hopefully we have something to share with the audience and you know the audience can go away and take one thing away from them. But social media is a very powerful tool for that. Um, just kind of have to weed through, but don't believe everything you hear. No, 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 no. And I'm thinking of, of things you shouldn't believe, but I'm not going to disclose them here. And you know who told me, and I think I've always used it in a good way to, because I have nothing to hide, man. The people that know me, it's, yeah, I have my shit like everybody has. Yeah. Had my, what are you going to do? Know? Ruin our reputations? Neither yeah. of us have good reputations. <laughs> You're your worst. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, 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 I'm being myself. I'm realizing like, like, the, the the realization of a kid's dream i'm doing it now and i'm just projecting it a little bit i'm not going to i'm not doing this to for self-promotion because i like this i really enjoy what i do yeah. it's fun and you know and sometimes this, that's enough that's what i tell myself you're yes, asking indeed. me earlier like what what are my analytics how many viewers do i get on the 
uh, Nimsy Lives. I don't know. That's not uh, why I do it. I do it because it's fun. I get to talk to yes, interesting people. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, so Papa Renato, he always told us, or he always told me about the power of storytelling, about how important it is to once you once you know how to use social media a little bit, how you should tell stories, stories that are correlated, stories that are, are transmitting stuff, stories that are you know connecting with the people. They say, hey, that's a cool story. Like I wanna, I just wanna do what you do. I, I I'm I'm I don't know, but that's 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 what you should aim at. That's what what you could healthily aim at, right? And that's what I'm trying to do. Well, and the great thing about storytelling is I can go speak at a conference in British Columbia and tell a story, and then I can be on a podcast and tell the same freaking story, and then I can go to South America and tell the same freaking story. <laughs> stories, <laughs> yeah, you get, I get a lot of mileage out of my stories, and that I learned from yeah. Renato. And that you learned from, I was, I was looking at look like, that, you learned from Renato. When Renato starts telling a story, <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, wow, interesting story. I'm just like, all right, I, I got to go get a coffee because I've already heard it nine times. I've, I literally wrote Renato's stories when I wrote the book. So not literally. I literally wrote Renato's stories. I love so, it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So today, guys, we're disclosing industry secrets. Oh, <laughs> Tucker, hey, I don't want to take more of your time. I really love you. I really appreciate you. You're a model to me. And I hope that in 30 years, we can still be friends and work and talk because I think we're going in the similar development directions, although we have separate different lives, but we want, we want good. We want wealth for all of what, for everybody uh, around us. Or right? just two millennials getting more gray in our beard every day, trying to figure out what we're going to do when we grow up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yes, indeed, my friend. Thank you for being here today with us. It's an honor. Yes, sir. It's a pleasure. I owe you one, okay? I'll go talk, talk with your audience soon, okay? All right. Thank you so much, Javi. Cheers, Appreciate everybody. It. Until the next episode of Merging Minds. Bye. <laughs>